Hey, welcome back to ZK Master Tech. Today, we're gonna work on one of the best combines ever made, in my opinion, the John Deere 9770 STS. These things really changed the game when they came out, and these combines are still running good to this day, you know? It's just nuts and bolts, we can fix them. Anyway, this combine here is setting a fault for the turbo actuator, and I had previously came out here and diagnosed it, and the turbo actuator shaft is just all floppy and loose, and basically, it can't move the vanes in the turbo like it's supposed to. So um, we're gonna be replacing the turbo actuator on this guy and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Um, we're also going to be pulling the moisture sensor out of the clean grain elevator because the motor in it keeps getting stalled and it won't move the plunger all the way up and down. So we're gonna show you how to recondition the moisture, se moisture sensor on this machine. So let's check it out. So first thing you want to do is drain the coolant down. Got a little petcock on the bottom of the radiator. I just take a hose, drain it straight down into a tub. We're going to reuse this coolant, so I made sure the tub was nice and clean. And we're going to drain out about three gallons or so because the turbo actuator is actually cooled by engine coolant. And so we got to drop the coolant level low enough to where we can R&R that turbo actuator without coolant flying everywhere. So. Josh, you want to get go ahead and shut that off. I think we got enough coolant drained out of there. We got Josh here with me again today. We had to take a break from the, the S790 in the shop because we got finally got parts in for this combine out in the country. So we're gonna get this job done real quick, and then we'll move back to the shop and start working on that combine again. So the first thing you want to do is we're gonna access the turbo actuator through here, not through the top. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could probably lean over and snake your hands through there, but uh, we're not gonna do it that way. It's pretty easy to get these shields off here and then it's just right there in your teeth. So when you pull the filters out, you gotta thread it out. And then we're gonna pull the ladder and then we're gonna pull this shield here. Pull your pins. Pull your ladder off to set it to the side. See how much more room for activities you have on the 70 series up yeah. here? I love it. The engine's right there, right where you can get to everything. It's pretty awesome, so you need a 13 for everything. Power up the old stubby with the 13 swivel. It's like the best combination ever. So we'll take all the bolts out for this shield and pull that shield off in one chunk. So now that shield comes off in one piece and set it aside. And then ta da! Engine. See, isn't that nice to work on? Yeah. Way easier to get to in yeah. the last series. I was like thinking, man, I'm gonna be working on my head all day. <laughs> <laughs> so here's our turbo actuator right here. And if I can get my hand in here, this shaft has an extreme amount of wiggle to it. See that? That's no bueno. So this turbo actuator needs to be able to move this up and down, but it's getting bound up because this shaft's just all jacked in it. So we'll take a four millimeter Allen out, take this little Allen bolt out, slide the linkage off right here. You got four 10 millimeter nuts holding on to the turbo housing. And then we're gonna take these two coolant lines off and then we'll pull the fittings out because we have to put that in the new turbo actuator and then we're going to take the clamps off for the wiring and get that all out of the way. Unplug your two connectors here. Turbo actuator comes off. Put a new actuator on. 
secure it down, hook everything back up, and then we'll go in the cab and we're going to calibrate it. So right now he's getting that bolt. You got to pull the bolt all the way out. Now you can slide that linkage off out of your way. Okay. Now you can work on getting the, uh, the electrical undone. So you've got a 13 on that clamp right there. Go ahead and pull that clamp off the wiring. We're going to reuse that. Perfect. Of course, you want to have a you know magnet tray sitting up here. Put all your stuff in. So one connector is your turbo speed sensor, and then the other connector is for your turbo actuator. There you go. What is this guy? That's your turbo speed sensor. So we'll have to cut the zip ties going to it. Just like that. Now you're going to take a 7 8 wrench and hopefully your fittings don't turn. And bust your coat lines loose. Hopefully you shouldn't bleed cooling everywhere. Oh, would you look at that. We got her down just good enough. Now take a now's the time to break your fittings loose. Instead of trying to hold it or put it in a vise or something to break those loose, I just go ahead and get my fittings out while it's secured to the turbo housing. She tight? Uh-huh. My goodness. You gonna need a, a bigger weapon? Oh Josh got it. He's got Popeye strength. Tight. Now you see why I break those loose while it's on the turbo housing. New actuator comes with new nuts too. And there's a little Loctite on those studs. She be careful. She's gonna drip. Yeah, let's go ahead and take that down. Got a new actuator, and we're just gonna install in reverse order. I think I'm gonna get you some new O-rings for these fittings. I feel a little, a little tired. So we'll grab those. Josh is going to go ahead and just get everything secured back on there like it was. I'll get some new O-rings. We'll put fittings in this guy, hook everything back up, and then we'll fill the coolant level back up, and then we'll calibrate it. Okay, we've got the turbo actuator all mounted on there. Got the, the wiring all tidied up, zip tied. Now it's time for flush cutters. Um, these are a Nipex flush cutters for plastic zip ties. You can get this on uh, Amazon. I think they're like $32, something like that. But uh, don't be an animal, flush cut your zip ties. No one likes sticking their arm into an engine compartment and have to get stitches because the zip tie just cuts you open. Boy, that's nice. Oh, would you look at that? Can't even feel it. Beautiful. So another thing I like about this engine, look no after treatment system. She comes straight out of the turbo into a muffler. And sometimes you'll see a guy put a chrome straight pipe on this beast and let me tell you what, that thing sounds awesome. It's a thing of beauty, chrome straight pipe on a nine liter. Anyway, so we got everything hooked up. Now, 
this is what a good actuator. So whenever you turn the key on, the ECU actuates this actuator and it goes like this and back down. You ever heard that noise whenever you key on your combine? That's what it is. So it's supposed to move up and down. So this linkage here is attached to a shaft that's rotating the vanes in this variable geometry turbo and it goes up and down. So on a tier three 9 liter, you've got an actuator like this. If you go to an uh, interim tier 4 or final tier 4 9 liter, your VGT has a, an internal actuator and it looks like a solenoid. You don't have this external actuator anymore. So this one's actually a lot easier to work on and replace. Um, so you also got to look at the wear on these joints here. Make sure they're not extra sloppy and loose. I've seen you know just the joint get all worn out and let me tell you what this linkage is expensive I think the last time I got just the linkage it was like four hundred dollars so yeah you definitely don't want that linkage to go out so but it is ch cheaper than buying a whole turbo so anyway that is how you replace the turbo actuator. Now all we gotta do is fill up the coolant, put the shields all back on, and then we have to basically reset the learn value on this actuator. So the ECU needs to know, you know, what position's all the way open and all the way closed. And we're gonna clear that data out and it's gonna do another uh, relearn when we kick the key on. It's gonna actuate that actuator up and down and learn the voltage values of the position sensor inside of that actuator. Okay, so we got the, the turbo actuator job done, calibrated, everything's working beautifully. The engine sounds better now that the turbo vanes can go where they need to go. Um, here we got the moisture sensor. It's coming out of the our clean grain housing up at the top of the grain tank here. So we're going to take some 13s out here and disconnect our electrical connectors. We're going to pull this guy out and set it on the tailgate of the truck and tear into this guy. Okay, so I got the moisture sensor here on the tailboard. Um, took out one 10 millimeter bolt, pulled this plunger out, and the seals are just completely shot on this thing. So it allows beans to go past the seal or corn, whatever you're harvesting. And we got beans down inside here. I took the uh, the top plate off here. Um, and here you've got a motor and a circuit board, and that's what makes the plunger go up and down. And then your moisture sensor is in here. Um, our problem is with the motor and the plunger assembly, so we're going to be taking that guy out because we're getting a code for um, the moisture sensor, um, the motor circuit fault, So, and I believe it's because it's getting all bound up in there, and I think it's done fried the, the motor because you turn the key on and it tries to move and then it starts and then it quits and it starts and it quits. So. We're going to go ahead and get this motor and actuator out of here and put it all in new. So here's the motor plunger assembly pulled out of there. I'm trying to get all the, the beans that are all stuck in there and get those all out and cleaned up. And uh, we'll, I'll get all the parts out of the box and we'll start uh, cleaning this stuff up and put new components in it. Just got a new motor here. Hook up the, the yellow and red wire up to these two little terminals right here and then this guy goes in there like that and there's one seven millimeter screw holding that all in so we'll get that in there so we got that all cleaned out um, got new gaskets on our spacer that goes in between the, the motor and the housing and you want to extend the plunger, you want to thread it all the way out to where it stops, and then you slide that that motor and plunger back in. Shove your bolts in it. We'll get those tightened up. And then on the end here, or this end of the plunger sticking out, we're going to stick a new plunger on there. So we got a new plunger in there, and you can see how this one seals all the way around. This one had giant gaps all the way around it so that lets the grain get past the seals and you don't want that so that's going to help that out a lot better keep the
grain from getting where it's not supposed to go. And now we just gotta put a new gasket on our top here. I'm gonna put a little silicone right here in these grooves to fill up this gap that the gas can't, can't cover and bolt this back on and then we'll be ready to go install this back into the elevators. Got our bolted back up in there. Got the electrical hooked up. Now we're ready to test it and see how it works. Easy. Put the fountain auger back up. Well that was this catching. All right, let's test her out. Okay, now we're gonna calibrate the moisture sensor now that the codes are cleared. Come up here, go hit it again, go to calibrations. It's already on moisture. If it's not on moisture, you can drop that box down and select it. We're gonna calibrate moisture, make sure that the sensor is empty and clean before proceeding, engine must be off. Hit next. The screen's making my camera freak out here. Calibration complete. Alrighty, no more codes. This thing's good to go. Alright, well we got that combine all happy. Um, that's going to do it for this episode of ZK Master Tech. I know it's kind of random to do a, a turbo actuator and a moisture sensor rebuild, but educational nonetheless. So uh, keep that green iron moving and I'll see you on the next one.